Hey everyone, this is John Stearns with the Zoom Rooms team, and this is an updated demonstration of Zoom digital signage. Now, I've, I've recorded videos of signage in the past. There's been some additional capabilities that have been baked in and rolled out over the last couple quarters. So I wanted to record a, a new video uh, running through the full signage solution end-to-end -end experience on the admin side, how easy it is to push out content, uh, the different roles that you can assign to people that might only have access to editing digital signage content, but you don't want to make them a full Zoom admin. So there's kind of a lot to cover here. I'll go ahead and dive right in, and we're going to start in the actual admin portal just to show how easy it is to go ahead and set up digital signage. So in general, uh, you get access to an unlimited number of Zoom digital signage displays that you can deploy as long as you maintain a single Zoom Room license in your entire subscription. So it's really an offshoot of the Zoom Room offer, but it's an incredible value that you can, you can roll this out to not just Zoom Rooms, but TVs, displays, hanging in common areas. So there's really a lot to cover. So I'm gonna go into Zoom, uh, room management into Zoom Rooms here, and I'm gonna jump into a specific device and go over to the signage tab. Now it's important to note, you don't have to do this at every device level. You could do it at the floor level, the building, the city, the, you know, the state, the country, across the entire account, any layer of that hierarchy, you could push out specific content. You could have global content being sent out and then regional content that is more um, uh, relatable to that specific office that's you know added in on top of the global content. You may even have some very specific content on floors like, for example, in the lobby, uh, you may have, you know, welcome VIP client, you know, signage and stuff like that. So you can really do what, what you need to do at any layer of that hierarchy. Now I'm going to go in here and just show uh, some of the capabilities of creating content lists. So right at the top, we choose the mode, right? Um, so we're going to focus a lot on the standard center, which is the main uh, full screen digital signage UI. Uh, but it is important to note that you can split content up on the screen if you wanted to. So if I wanted to have a video playing on the left and an image on the right, cafeteria menu or something like that, you can you can display all that. Um, if I wanted to just have uh, it flipped over to an HDMI source to run um, as part of the digital signage, it would go to a third party digital signage player, for example, I can configure that. Now, where is this helpful? Maybe if we have Zoom rooms set up and we're, we're using a, uh, you know, a, a completely separate signage platform, or if we have cable TV or a Apple TV or something like that, that is uh, set up in that physical conference room, that when digital signage is set to kick in after a meeting ends, or if there's no content being scheduled or no meetings being scheduled, that I can automatically flip it over to that HDMI source. So that's what that's for. So let's jump into the standard center here. The first thing I'm gonna to go to is edit banner on the bottom right. So I'm gonna choose what I want to display across the top of the digital signage screens. I can show things like the room name, which might be relevant for conference rooms, maybe not as relevant for lobbies and common areas. So I'm gonna unselect that one. Time's always helpful to, to show. So I like to keep that there right in the center. And then the sharing key is optional as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but if you want to allow your employees to wirelessly share content to the signage display and use it for you know, local meetings and screen sharing, you keep that sharing key there. If it's in a public lobby or something like that, you probably want to uh, disable that specific toggle. I'm gonna to keep it on for now. So let's go ahead and add some content. So I hit the add content button and you'll see on the left there, there's a variety of sources I can pull in content from. Um, obviously I can upload right from my computer. So I'll go ahead and choose a couple files here. I've got a couple of images. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add those in there. And um, I'm gonna jump down to URL. So there might be certain website content that I wanna plug into this. So I'm gonna grab the Zoom website here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of YouTube videos that I've uh, recorded on other parts of the, the Zoom Spaces portfolio. So I can add YouTube videos in here, uh, dictate that that should go full screen mode. I'm gonna remove the closed captioning. And if I wanted to go ahead and add additional videos, I can do that. Um, I think we've got the idea here. Um, scrolling down to the next option on the tab, instructions. What are, what are these for? If you're playing 
digital signage on Zoom rooms themselves when they're not being used for meetings or screen sharing. This is a really good way to add how-to instructions for your users, especially if Zoom rooms are new. So at the bottom here, I'm gonna choose these two images which show how to start a meeting, how to control the in-meeting experience and things like that. So I've added a bunch of stuff in here between images uh, from my local uh, computer. I've had, got, put some URL or website-based content and I've put in a couple of uh, how-to instructions, right? So I can see these have all been added into uh, my playlist here. Now, if I go back to additional sources of content, I also have the ability if I wanted to, as you centrally uh, build out content libraries for the organization, this is where I could go in and select uh, pre-canned content. I can go in and select entire folders. If I go down to the next tab, I can go and bring in entire playlists that have been curated by you know, different departments, uh, marketing and communications, maybe a local playlist, et cetera. So it's really easy to pull in all sorts of content there. What I can also do is if we go to the workspace reservation tab, the next content source down, I can easily select that. And that will bring in a real-time view into my uh, workspaces floor uh, and all the room and desk availability into that digital signage playlist. We've got a whole separate video that's focused on workspace reservation. If you wanted to learn more on that, this is a really nice, easy way to bring that into Zoom digital signage, really pulling that platform uh, of, of all the Zoom spaces capabilities together. I can also pull content from third-party cloud-based uh, content sources like Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, and Box. So those are right there as well. So I will go ahead and add that item in there. Now we've got a variety of um, items in our playlist. I can go in there and very easily reorder them. So if I wanted to play the YouTube video first, I'll drag that to the top. I've got a couple of different images uh, that are in here. Uh, I've got the how-to instructions. I've got our website. So I've got all of our stuff that's in here now. Um, and then I can actually go in and for each component of the playlist, I can determine how many seconds or how many minutes or the exact time I want that source to play for. So for images, I like to keep them at five seconds. If I'm showing a video, um, that might be completely customizable based on the length of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that, that part for 30 seconds. Got another image for five seconds. I'm gonna show the Zoom website maybe for, uh, go ahead and show that for 10 seconds. You get the idea, you can really customize this. Um, and then at the bottom, that workspace reservation, uh, you know, real-time um, display of room and desk availability, I can, I can uh, display that as long as I want. I'm gonna cut that down to, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so. So um, very easy to go ahead and set all of this up. I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, save some of, my, um, some of my work here. I could go ahead and schedule this to play at a certain time. So I wanna build out this playlist. Maybe it's um, some signage, you know, uh, promoting an upcoming event or holiday or something like that. And I want it to play for a very specific time and I want it to end on a very specific date so that content doesn't get uh, uh, dated um, and that type of thing. I can go ahead and fill this out. And when I move myself down here, now I see display period. This is relevant really only to signage being displayed on Zoom rooms themselves. This is where we can go ahead and customize um, when I want signage to start playing again after a meeting ends. So I'll go ahead and do that immediately. And then when I want content to stop playing before a meeting is scheduled to begin. So as people are filtering into a conference room, I might wanna stop that five minutes before um, you know, a meeting is supposed to, to start. Um, I can decide whether or not to put sound on or off. Usually signage content is going to be off. There might be certain areas of the building that you want to play sound if you're playing videos and stuff like that. And then I'll go ahead and turn the last one, enable digital signage to turn on. So I'll go ahead and save that as well. So nice and easy to go ahead and create some content from scratch here. Um, as we saw, I could go to a very specific uh, part of the room management under digital signage content on the very far left there. And I could jump into, um, you know, those playlists that, that we saw that I had created before. I could go ahead and um, edit playlists. I can publish them. If I publish a playlist, I can uh, determine where exactly I want that to be published down to the device, the floor, the building, et cetera. So any, anywhere in that hierarchy, I can, I can uh, publish those. I can go to my uh, content folders. Um, so I'll jump in. I've got a folder full of uh, YouTube videos I've created. I've got a folder full of Zoom room images I could pull to. 
So this is a, you know, a central uh, content repository that makes it easy to go ahead and access any of this. If people want to bring in their own signage playlists, I can go ahead and add any of those, a new playlist, a new folder, or just content in general. Um, so very easy to go ahead and do that. Um, one other thing that I wanted to call attention to is the management um, or creation of content and who has access to, to go in there and create content and publish playlists and whatnot. And what's usually the case is our Zoom admins, the people that are responsible for the day-to-day -day Zoom um, you know, deployment, Zoom account, their Zoom meeting users, phones, Zoom rooms, et cetera, are typically different uh, folks than the people that would be responsible for creating, editing, pushing content playlists. Um, those folks might be in marketing or communications. So it's important to leverage uh, what we call roles and role-based access in, um, in all of this. So if I go up to user management, there's a section called roles. I'm going to go into roles here. And um, for the sake of this, I'm going to go ahead and create a, um, add a new role. I'm going to call this digital signage admin. And so when I go to that specific role, now I get to go in here and choose what anyone that is a digital signage admin will have access to. And for the most part, I'm going to not give them access to, to much at all, but I'm going to go down here and jump into Zoom Rooms Management, and I'm going to go down um, past Zoom Rooms and go to Digital Signage, right? And I'm going to go to select uh, both of these, which would be the view and edit capabilities to allow anyone that has access as a signage admin to only access digital signage. They can't access anything else in my Zoom account. So I'll go ahead and save those changes, and I can assign those roles to whoever I want to that may have access to um, you know, uh, updating and generating digital signage uh, content and that type of thing. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second here. You'll notice that behind me, this is the Zoom room system that I was adding and creating and curating content for. Um, so we see that's already playing. Um, I see my Zoom room how-to guides that I pulled into the uh, content. I can see the real-time visibility into my workspace reservation floor maps. I see all the green availability for conference rooms and desks. Um, I don't see any uh, rooms reserved right now. This is my, my home sandbox, so no rooms are booked. This is a nice, easy way for employees to look up at a sign and, and very easily see where they might be able to go grab some space to get their work done. Um, so that's brought right into the playlist. That's real time. So if the next time uh, we get around to that playlist and someone makes a reservation, you would see that reflected there. And now we start to see some of the other images. Uh, it's going to jump into a... Uh, video that I've pre-recorded for a totally separate product. Uh, that's that, that YouTube video that I pulled in. So very easy to pull in uh, all sorts of different content, uh, whether it's web-based content, photos, images, uh, videos, uh, pull that workspace reservation content in, et cetera. Um, so very easy to use, uh, very cost-effective. Just to go back to the very beginning, you need a single Zoom Room license in your entire Zoom account, and you can set up as many digital signage displays as you want. That can run on Zoom rooms, it can run on TVs or displays in common areas throughout your building. You do need to run it on some form of compute. So whether it's a small form factor, a PC stick or a signage uh, appliance like a Yaylink Roomcast, they're usually just a few hundred bucks for um, some form of device to run the Zoom application on it. And that's all you need. You don't have to buy a license for every Zoom signage display. <clears throat> So uh, hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, make sure you subscribe, like the video, comment. Again, reach out if you have any, any questions on this content or if you have any uh, requests for future videos. I appreciate you sticking around and viewing this. I hope everyone has a great day and a happy new year. Take care.